Welcome to Cigar Time, your friendly Tuesday night show all about cigars. Happy to say we're still number one with the largest viewed cigar Woo. show in the entire world. Woo! Yay! Yay. Possibly in the entire, entire world. Universe. In the entire well, universe. We don't know that. Well, we don't have reports in from uh, Venus and uh, Uranus. Uranus, yeah. <laughs> you don't want a report from Venus. Okay, <laughs> moving along. You started that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, a little housekeeping. A, a, a little housekeeping. We have been informed now over the past few weeks that a, a number of viewers are watching our show in uh, other, other smoke shops throughout the Delaware Valley, and we're happy for that. You know, we have nine stores scattered all over the place, but we don't have stores on every single corner. <laughs> so so uh, wherever you watch the show and patronize your local dealer, that's great for us. We hope you patronize us when you're in our areas. But wherever you buy your smoke, just keep on smoking. That's right, as long as you're smoking. As long as you're smoking. Brick and mortar. Brick and mortar. Yes, brick and, brick and mortar. Stores. Support your local brick and mortar store. Another thing I might bring up, although we only had one comment about this, the reviews you hear on this show, whether we're, we're promoting the cigar or whether we're not promoting the cigar, are honest reviews. These are our reviews. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. But, you know, it doesn't matter whether we're selling the cigar at a good price or whether we're just, you know, showing you and reviewing a cigar you may want to try or a new cigar. The panel smokes them and the panel talks them. And there's no buying that. There's no influence. and, and it's, it's what you see is what you get. We keep it yeah, real. Think, we keep it people, real. I think the customers that are watching, the, our customers, yeah. as opposed to those from other shops, already know that about us. I, I don't know. We get a lot of people saying that because we're promoting cigars, that we're giving them good ratings just to make a little extra. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not, that's no. not true at all. We I keep it real Viewers here. will have heard enough negative comments mm -hmm. from us yeah, what we don't yeah. like. And as I right. recall, I don't recall which uh, cigar he it was. He didn't like the uh, Renaissance. You didn't like the uh, Rocky Patel Renaissance. No, he didn't. I liked it. It wasn't. It was yeah, not my favorite. Yeah, but you gave it a lower rating. Or yeah, gave it a lower, somebody it, gave it a lower I rating. I gave one of them a lower rating. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like mm -hmm. it's a lot like drinking wine. It's very subjective. Right. One man's feast is another man's famine or ladies, and it's what you hear is the unvarnished truth. I mean, we call it as we see it. So, yeah, Rob didn't like the house cigar. He didn't like one. He didn't like one of the many, many models of our Eduardo. It's hey, terrible. You don't have to rub it in. You don't have to rub it in. What do you want me to say? Can we smoke some? Yeah, yeah. 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 Paul's, like Paul's getting I'm itchy. Pulling, I'm pulling apart. Here. Paul hasn't smoked in about 15 minutes. So he's <laughs> you don't have to wait for her. Dad, you don't have to wait for her to The the enchanting and lovely Miss Tia will tell us about our first cigar, and we'll light it. Our first cigar is the Fratello. It's actually one of my newest favorite cigars. It just came out on the market a couple months ago. The wrapper is Nicaraguan. The binder is Ecuadorian Sumatra. And the filler is Nicaraguan and Peruvian. The sizes are Corona, Robusto, Toro, and Tamacle, which is a 6x60 six or otherwise known as Gordo. The taste profile are pepper, earth, and sweet notes. Cool. This is one of my favorite cigars. Very good taste. Thank you. Put out a lot of smoke, doesn't it? it does yes, put out a does. lot of smoke. Oh, well, lucky we have the smoke eaters on. Do we? Well, I think it's uh, time for our, one of our favorite segments based on uh, viewer suggestions. Paul, and you've been in the factory, you've been in the fields, you've been in the uh, bands, you've been in the uh, boxes. I think it's about time maybe you should tell the people those many, 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 many years ago, how you got started in the business? Mm. Well, Art, you know, that's a question I get asked a lot. We, we get uh, emails about it, and people have been asking me for a long time, so how did you start in this business anyway? And I'll tell you, because it, it was a crazy thing. After 20 years in the advertising business, but all that time smoking cigars in the same devoted way I do now, uh, a good friend of mine who had a housekeeper from Nicaragua brought me some cigars from Nicaragua. This is back in the mid-90s. Uh, one of them, I thought, was absolutely spectacular. It was one of the best cigars I had ever tasted. It had no name, it had no box, it had no band. So, of course, I went to the housekeeper and said, where did you get this from and how can I get more? And she told me it was from the market. Being uh, an ignorant gringo, as I am, 
uh, I thought she meant the supermarket. <laughs> and and my, my big idea was, I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to go to the supermarket, and I'm going to ask the manager where this cigar comes from. Um, and that, that is literally what I did. I booked a flight. I loaded a suitcase full of cash. I told my wife, I'm going down to Nicaragua to find the best cigar in the world and bring it back. Uh, she told me I was out of my blanking mind and that I probably would never make it back alive. Um, and you went anyway. And I went anyway. <laughs> nice. Did you make it back alive? Well, that's a subject <laughs> of debate. <laughs> um, anyway, I got on the plane. I flew down there. At, at that point in my life, I didn't even really speak any Spanish. Uh, but I got to Managua, checked into a little motel across the road from the airport. And the next morning, I went to the market. And it wasn't a supermarket. It was the market for all of Managua. It was basically the place where all two million people from Managua buy everything they buy every day. So there were literally thousands of stalls out in a big field. Uh, there were guys roasting coffee. There were guys butchering live cows. There were people carving furniture and women making tortillas and just everything you can imagine. And I spent that entire day from beginning to end walking through this entire massive place trying to ask people if they had cigars and if they did where they came from. And a few people did have cigars there. Uh, none of them were the one I was looking for, but whenever I asked where they came from, they all told me the same thing. They all said Esteli, uh, that all the cigar factories were in Esteli. So I went back to my little motel and I went to the one person there, a young guy who spoke some English, and I asked him if I could rent him for a few days and we could go up to Esteli <laughs> and, and look at cigar factories. You can get in trouble for that now. Renting young Renting guys? Young guys yeah. yeah, well. <laughs> not down there. You can. Um, <laughs> wait a minute, you can get in trouble for that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you better stop it. Just, okay. just a reminder, yeah. folks, this is a family show. All right. <laughs> so we hopped in a car and we drove the three hours, and it was actually quite an adventure. We drove the three hours to Esteli, and since we didn't know where any of the factories were, he basically hung out the window of the uh, car yelling, Donde esta la fabricas de tabacos? Where are the cigar factories? And we were directed to different factories. And this kid <laughs> was a very sharp kid because what he did was at each factory we went to, he would run in first, and he would say, out there in the car is Senior Major, a very important man in the cigar business. <laughs> and if you show him proper respect, he might buy some of your cigars. And this was his idea. I didn't even think of this. And then I would walk in, and the owners of each factory were all over me, sticking cigars in my pocket, sticking cigars in my mouth, trying to tell me the story of their factory and what they were doing. And my little uh, excursion to Esteli became a six-week visit. Wow. Uh, I literally visited virtually every cigar factory in Nicaragua. Uh, I was really very welcomed at every one, except Padron, where they chased me away with shotguns. <laughs> uh, because, at least at their factory, they were not welcoming guests at all down there at that time. Anyway, the, the next to last factory I visited was actually, the, at the time, the largest factory in Nicaragua. It was uh, run by Juan Bermejo. Uh, and Juan was a real gentleman, an old line guy in the business. And as soon as I showed him the cigar that I was looking for, he said, well, I don't make that, but I know who does. And I'll take you to dinner with him tonight, and wow. then you'll get to meet him. And I met him. Uh, Rinaldo Gonzalez de Leon was his name. He was an old, old Cuban guy, very funny guy. And the next day, I went over to his factory, which was tiny, in a bullet-ridden old building <laughs> that had barely survived the, uh, the revolution. Yeah, bullet-ridden, not safe. And, of course, he did the same routine. He stuck cigars in my pocket. He stuck cigars in my mouth. And as soon as I lit one, I knew that, in fact, I had found the right cigar. Hmm. So I bought as many as my suitcase full of cash would pay for, which turned out to be 20,000 cigars. Loaded up my car and my little boy, 
<laughs> I might want to ease off that little boy. Yeah, little yeah, boy. I loaded up my car and my assistant. I know his wife. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Um, and we, we drove back to Managua. And then began an entirely different process. I, I Basically, I sat in my motel room with a phone and called every cigar shop that I knew of as a customer. Because I smoking 12 cigars a day, you go in and out of a lot of cigar shops. I'm sure you would. So I, would, I called them all from down there and said, I'm sitting here in Managua with what I think is the best cigar ever, and it's never been imported to the United States, and you better buy some now because if you don't, they're going to be gone. And because this was in the height of the boom, people were very anxious to get their hands on anything that was worth smoking. So I sold all 20,000 cigars on the telephone, sight unseen. Uh, I got on a plane to come home. Uh, when I got home, I created a little band on my computer, which was a real challenge. Uh, both of my daughters, who were little girls at the time, started cutting out the bands and gluing them themselves on the cigars. Uh, I built some wooden boxes out in my garage and delivered them to the stores that had bought them. And that's how I started in the business. Wow, wow. cool. A cool. long answer to a short question. <laughs> well, what, was that? what was the cigar? Is there anything that we've ever had? Uh, no. No? No, it did was before ever, I knew you guys. Did you ever buy it again? Yeah, I continued to buy it until Mr. Gonzalez de Leon took orders from several people in the United States for different things he was making that added up to about $2 million, and he took advance payments and disappeared with a 20-year-old American girl. Really? <laughs> and, and I kid you not, there was a price on his head in Managua. Wow. And for years after that, if you went into any car rental agency in Nicaragua, his name was on the top of the bulletin board that showed people who don't pay, so don't rent to them no matter wow. what. So he was infamous down there after that, and I couldn't buy his cigars anymore because he was gone. He didn't tell you the blend or anything? No. He didn't Absolutely. tell me anything except, how many do you want, and when can you wire me the money? Hmm. Did, you get wow. your, did you ever get a card from him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Postcard? Yeah, postcard a, with a picture of his young American girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. All right, all right. Moving start. along, I think... I'm uh, sure he was of age. I think yeah. uh, we ought to get some comments on the Fratello we're smoking. Yes? Sure. Who wants to start out? Taylor does. I'll start. Okay. So I told you. Uh, yeah, because this is one of my favorite cigars. Um, I'm getting a plethora of smoke in my mouth. I get plethora. to wow. <laughs> I think that's the second time that's been used on this show. Oh, has it? I this thought I was high the brow. first. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the one uh, using the big words. I love Italy. to play with because it gives you a lot of smoke. You can play with it in your mouth. I like that. Um, <laughs> You're getting the camera crew all worked up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I'm not quite in the middle yet, but in the beginning, you get a nice spicy flavor, but it's not too much. It's just enough. Uh, the construction is nice. Um, hmm. Yeah. No comment on the band? the band? The band's, the band's Omar, okay. Omar, Omar, it's a year perfecting this really? band. Yeah. This Absolutely. is a very unique band. The band band. Is awesome. The band's okay. Oh, oh my wow. favorite. Sorry. Wow. Sorry, Omar. I'm a, you know what? I'm going to tell you on the band. Yeah, really, okay. I love this band. Omar, I think it's, it's so you when, love I first, the band. when I first met Omar some time ago, he spent a half hour describing yeah, what went into this band. Yeah, well, you were there. Well, we would love to, to know. Well, tell us what happened. Put the band on it. Tell us. Oh man! <laughs> because of the shape of it, it's very, it's very unique, and it they is. have to, they have to match the lines up perfectly. It takes a lot it's of like time a good suit, you know, to, to make this band. My daughters definitely would not have been able to glue these bands. Yeah. Sorry. Because of okay. the band shape. It's, all right. Yeah. All right you're yeah. you, you hurt his feelings, I'm sure. I, I'm Rob? so sorry. I like this cigar. It's very, uh, like Tia said, it's a new cigar. It's very good. I do get the sweetness to it. I do get a little bit of the pepper. Uh, I like it. It's very good. It's smooth. So. Paul? I find it to be very mild, but the flavors are good ones. Right. I taste the pepper. I taste a little bit of the earth. I definitely taste the, the sweet, sweet notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it's it's not an in-your-face cigar, but the flavors are good. That's okay. what I would um, say. This is better than the one I've had before. Yeah. I, I have not been a, a fan of it. I don't know if it's the difference in the... We may have 
had I may have had a different size cigar before. We're smoking a Toro right now. No, this is a Robusto. Robusto. It's a Robusto. It's a big. Yeah. It's a big Robusto. It's a bigger Robusto. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, I like this one a lot better than than the first one I've had. Um, I definitely I agree with everybody on the spice. It's I think it's almost like a red pepper I'm getting, and I'm getting a full mouth feel like that. Like mm. my whole my whole palate is covered right. with, uh, with, with flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feel mm -hmm. pepper. Yeah. Um, definitely earthy, uh, and I noticed some some leather too. It's like a little bit of a. I don't I know. Hint yeah, it's it's yeah, just a little bit of yeah. it. I'm I'm enjoying the cigar. It's 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 better than the ones I've had previously. I get the leather when Maybe I blow it through my nose. Size. Yeah. yeah, and and I actually I I don't find it mild at all. I find it more medium. It's actually to more full. medium. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would say it's it's more medium. It's probably on the medium to lower side of medium. But it clear, mm. I, clearly, I, I don't think I would call it mild. And clearly, the spice is all over my tongue, and the sweet note mm -hmm. is a nice finish. Uh, this is a very interesting story. Omar is actually works for NASA. He's a rocket scientist. Mm -hmm. yeah. He also was a former basketball player, and he's about I don't know. What, six, six, nine? six nine? Yeah, he's about six nine. He, he's, he blocks the sun, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he is a great great character in our nice industry. Uh, he's all over Facebook and um, Twitter Instagram. and the rest of the social media. Mm -hmm. You can bump into him literally anywhere. Yeah. Uh, he's a great guy and. I'm going to let Scott tell you, he's going to be in our stores in just a few days. Yeah, he's going to be uh, in... He's going to be in Reading? Reading on Friday. Reading Friday. Yeah. And so then you get to see me. And then <laughs> Colmar and Horsham on Saturday. Cool. So that's, when you say Friday, you mean May 2nd? May 2nd. May 2nd. Saturday, Saturday, May 3rd. Just Friday. Friday. Yeah, it's just Friday. It's just coming Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. making sure everybody knows. Um, you'll get emails on the times and you know deals and all that other kind of good stuff, but just, you know... Reading, Colmar, and, and, and if you're not on our email list, get on our email list. Yeah. yeah. How do you do that? Oh, you go to the website. Which is where? ccigars.com. That's ccigars.com. That's it. Leave me on the no, island. No, double C. Cigars. Double C cigars. You forgot your own line. <laughs> oh, no. Cut. Gotcha. <laughs> Where's the website? It's on the internet. <laughs> it's on the interweb. <laughs> Do we want to rate these or go right yeah. into our top? Oh, let's rate them. Let's rate them. All right, let's start the opposite right. way. Let's okay. start with Paul first. I give it a four. Hey, right. I give it a four. I think it's better than that. My my, my own opinion, I'd give it at least a four and a quarter. Uh, I like it more than you guys. Uh, I give it a four or five. Wow, okay. That's a good rating. I'm giving Grand with Rob four and a half. Yeah, it's a good oh. cigar. Yeah, I, I good like cigar. the cigar a lot. Really All right, do. so we're and four. And when you get down to the bottom, you really feel exactly good. four point two five. What what is, what is it's it? Exactly four point two five. Was the rating? Yeah. Okay. He's working on we'll his math skills. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> two fours. It is. <laughs> two fours. Two. Two, two four fives. And yeah. And two four point five. Four, four point five. And a four two five. Four two five. And that's that's four two five. That is exactly right. That is correct. I'm totally out of this one. No, no, the four two five is correct. Are we done? Talking about the ratings. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's throw some four point Well, that was kind of easy. You throw out the two top, you throw out the two bottom, and it's a guy in the middle, me. Oh yeah, you oh, do right. the median. That's right. Okay. Okay. All right. Our uh, topic for today is is going to be cigar trends. Yeah, we started this uh, last week or a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I so. Last we week, got sidetracked. Yeah, Paul. Paul touched a little bit on. On one of them, which was the boutique cigars. The the emergence of more and more yeah. the little companies doing boutique. Here you go. Well, yeah, this We're is the perfect it. one. This for is tell yeah. perfect yeah. example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there's a, there, I think there's a lot of really good uh, cigars coming. Now, what we talked about more last week was what makes a boutique. Like, you know, Dom Pepin, I think, was considered technically a boutique, but I think what we're talking about is the smaller guys. Like, right. Like Omar, Paul Bush. Um, right. Think, Panacea, uh, yeah. Pa yeah. Panacea, Panacea, yeah. Panacea, there's uh, the, That's the Blanco. Blanco. Yeah. Blanco. Blanco. Yeah, David Blanco. Blanco. Yeah, yeah we just yeah. had an event with him. Um, so, that, I mean, I think you see a lot more of them room? coming out. What's that? The aging well, room. Well, aging room, no. it, it, that's a, a different category because they call themselves boutique blends. That's the name of the that's company. That's the name of the company, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they are a big, established, vertically integrated company and even That's though Rafael, even though that brand is a boutique-ish kind of cigar right. uh, it's not a boutique company mm. and there are quite a few of those what I call pseudo boutiques out there right. that are big big established companies but they 
it's kind of like the the micro brew beers, but they actually come from Budweiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ying's a micro brew. Yeah. Right. But it's it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So a couple others. There's uh, Pinar del Rio, I think. Um, I think it's Abe Flores, and then there's also the Emilio, which I think is owned by a guy in Delaware, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But um, th yeah, there's there's a lot of them, um, and I think that the easiest the uh, sizes. Yeah, the sizes. I mean, the big ring gauges. Yeah, six we, by we should have brought an asylum the, uh, in. The eight that by eight by eighty. Six by eighty. Yeah, the six by eighty. That's, I'm that's, for, yeah, who's that's coming a trend. Who's coming out with a ninety? Yeah, it's who's coming out with a ninety? So, do I don't you, know. Do you guys think? Uh, do you think this is? Do you see this starting to come around more? Are the uh, barber pole cigars? No. No, I don't think so. I mean, Evelyn. You know, it's like Candela. Like it's though. like Candela. It, it's a fad. That, that once well, or twice a year, so, yeah, yeah, but it, but it well, has fad versus trend is. I don't think it's a trend. No, no. I, I mean, see, has been making it in America for you know. Yeah, and then there's the the ogre. Yeah, there's you know there's a smaller ogre. Yeah, they just ogre. came out with it. Yeah, I saw that yeah. somewhere. Ooh, and Rob, that. one of your favorite brands uh -huh. ever came Steve. in a barber pole years ago. Years yeah. ago, a long yeah, time Beethoven? ago. The Beethoven yeah, Duet. The Beethoven Duet. Right. Yeah, that was a good cigar. No, 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 that's one of my. I love that cigar. That's a very good cigar. I really like that one. And the box was Beethoven awesome. Yes, the box, the box. was yeah. a piano. It was a grand yeah. piano. Yeah. And the cigar, I, I, I know you said you did this on purpose, but you'd open the lid and the, the, and the, the cigars would move. The cigars would move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was cool. I don't know if you did it on purpose or yeah, not. Yeah, the, the hinge, well, it wasn't a hinge, but the back of the lid right. lifted up the cigars, so they popped out of the box a yeah, little bit. it was really cool. It was cool. Yeah. yeah it, was it was an expensive box. We still have those, bo you still have those boxes here somewhere. Yes. I think I in the background. Another one is um, starting to hear a lot of rumblings on fire cured. Well, we actually we have we have the the San Lucia, um, but a lot more people are using Kentucky and fire cured tobacco. Yeah, yeah Drew, Drew, Sta Drew, Drew State, State has yeah. The, yeah. The, the KFC, the Kentucky Fried Chicken. No, no. Kentucky, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Fire cured. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Chicken. They sort of own the rights to KFC. <laughs> yeah, somebody does. Yeah. As yeah, it right. relates to food products, which I, you also put in your mouth. And I think. Um, Panacea. I think Paul's experimenting with uh, uh, something with the Kentucky and some fire cured. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I've actually. Did I that you call? Didn't you do that years there ago? You, the very first brand, again years ago, to use fire cured pipe tobacco, long filler in a cigar, was the uh, S. Holmes, the Sherlock Holmes. Brand. Yeah. Really? That was a great cigar. I and that was years ago too. I wasn't a fan. Oh, I liked it. It had a unique taste. Sorry, Paul. It did have a unique I, taste. I, I had a really yeah, unique taste. Yeah, it's unique I don't like the flavor. I don't like the flavored or tobacco cigar. The He's a tobacco, traditionalist. You know, the pipe flavored He's a traditionalist. Stuff. I like cigars. What do you want to do? Do you, like the, do you like the fire cured stuff oh my so far? I... Um, what do you think that is? Not really. Okay. Like the KFC from, uh, the from yeah, Jewish States. Chicken. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan. See, I, okay. I, I like it because it's... It's different. Different, yeah. It's not. It's not artificially flavored, so to speak. Like right. It's, like they're not like spraying it yeah. with sugar yeah. or anything. And it's not like the acid line. Right. Well, but, uh, yeah. Still, I, I'm just not a fan of that. No. I'm, just like, oh, I'm like traditional smoke. I, for the most part, I am too. I, I, I liked it. I, I like the San Luis. I like the KFC, and I did have a sample of the one Paul Bush did. It was, was it very was interesting. Good? Yeah, I thought it was very I good. I like yeah. to try. I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, adverse to trying it. Right. But I don't know. Just not. The, the not, interesting not thing about that is that uh, fire cured pipe tobaccos are as diverse as cigar tobaccos. Right. So, you, as, a, as a blending exercise, you can wind up with things as wildly different as you do in regular cigars, even though it's not flavored, even though it's just different kinds of pipe tobacco. Yeah, fermented and, and cured different ways. It's probably tough to use because you want, I, I, I don't know if you want the, well, I guess it's up to the blender, but if you, you don't, may not want the fire cured to be the overwhelming flavor. You may want to, I think a lot of them Just try to, to have subtle a subtle note. Exactly. Yeah, it's got to be a tough blending process. Oh, I, I imagine it'll be very difficult. It is, but I'll tell you what, the cigars that use a good amount of pipe tobacco are amongst the only cigars that you can smoke in mixed company and the women won't complain right, about the smell. True. That's true. That's, Most that's women true. really yeah. like that's the smell of pipe tobacco. Point. I heard somewhere, I don't know if it's true, the natural, is, is that pipe tobacco from Drew? No. I don't know that. No. It's, I it's still it infused. Tobacco. It's still infused, from what I understand. It's still infused with the scented oils, but not as much. I, I'm, I don't know how that works. 
Wow. You know, an interesting question. We're discussing cigar trends. You know, what is the difference between a trend and a fad? I mean, truly, what is the difference? A fad, something I, that I fades, it, that fades I, away? I, I think, think it's... Trend well, a trend, a trend. I think a, uh, a fad would be like the, the nub cigars. It's hot for a real, real short period of time, and then goes kind away. Yeah, but that was away. that. But, but wait a minute. The nub, the nub has been selling for seven or eight years now. But, yeah, but not like the six by sixty. Six by sixty, well, I think, would be a trend. I I think the difference between a in the cigar business between a fad and a trend is if a brand comes out with something unusual, even if people like it and it stays around a while. It's a fad unless other companies wind up moving in that direction. So then, the, it's then, then it's, then a, it's trend. a trend. Then the industry yeah. like bigger ring gauges in general. Right. Yeah, but they all chase their tail. I mean, yeah. when the nub first came what about out. Fuller yeah. sizes. I mean, fuller, fuller body cigars. Well, that 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 that's is cyclical. Yeah. That's more cyclical. Yeah. That might well, that, that might be more fatty. Yeah. I guess, if it's, I guess if it's cyclical, well then what? How, how does it move from at the same time from a trend to a standard? To to a yeah. I think actually. I think a six by sixty is I not think, a trend anymore. Yeah, it's, it's not I, a trend anymore. I think the trend of more fuller body is actually moving away from fuller body and coming back to more medium and mild mm. cigars. I I think the you're right. I, I think the leading edge of yeah. the business these days is more flavor and less power. Exactly. Yeah. I think, I think, I think the, it that's the way it should be. I think that the, a fad is something that's in a short period of time. A trend is a longer period of time, I, I, and then it becomes standard. Yeah, I think like a I, six I would by agree with sixty. That. Let's I, talk about cigars. It is. We are. Yeah. We are. But that's, what, and, you know, you know with, the, with what Tia mentioned with the, the full body, like I, I traditionally like a more full bodied cigar, but it, it doesn't. The strength. Or the body doesn't matter to me as long as it has a lot of flavor. And right. if they come out with a medium or a mild cigar that has a lot of flavor, like well, that's, business, I'm all for it. This business has dramatically evolved. I mean, 50 years ago, the cigar business was mostly Candela, smaller sizes, a lot of Perfectos. I mean, it, 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 yeah, the, the Colorado wrapper was a fad or a trend at one yeah, point. Exactly. Right, exactly. And now it's everywhere. English market EMS was almost the exclusive uh, wrappers of English cigars. That's I mean, made for the English market. Yeah. So, I mean, so now, it was little, back then it was little green cigars. Yeah, little green yeah. cigars. Like little green normal. men, yeah. Was that Havana From Clear? Or is that? No, no, well, I mean, Havana Clear was one of them. That okay. was made, made, but Havana Clear was made in a factory in Tampa. Uh, from Havana, from you know, reasonably priced Havana tobacco, and they called it Havana Clear. But it was an American cigar, actually. It was made an American in this made cigar, right. yeah, usually with a Connecticut wrapper. I don't believe this. We're, no. almost, we're almost out of time. I know. I see we that. get we get talking about these things. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying well, that the was, hey, look, That was the whole idea of the show. Oh, okay. I yeah. mean, no, that, that the whole the concept was, you know, the, the concept I, was us just sitting around talking. Yeah, just real oh, quick. Oh, that's what it is. Oh, yeah, we have to <laughs> you know, Well, we want to remind yeah. you, we want to <laughs> remind you, we have nine stores, and Scott's going to tell you where they're all at. Oh, good Lord. I'll do it with Rob. has got uh, Horsham, Free, uh, uh, Phoenixville, <laughs> Phoenixville, <laughs> Horsham, Colmar, Phoenixville. Redding, Oxford Valley, Freehold, Westchester, um, Frazier, and Ludwig's Corner, yeah. Glenmore, Malvern, whatever you want to call it. And you can learn all about that on our website, which is at doublecigar.com. Thank you. Time to say goodbye. Say bye-bye, How long do I have? Do I have a quick second? second. I no. just want to no. say, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao for now, everybody. Smoke often and smoke happy. Life's too short to smoke cheap cigars. Yeah! Hi, Mom. And try to buy your fair share from us. Thank you very much. See you next week. Bye-bye.